for another episode here. Uh, last time we talked, we said uh, we we're on the side of states should not surrender sovereignty and comply with humanitarian and national law. Well, today we're going to be doing the other side, the rebuttal. We're going to be just uh, deciphering why states should surrender sovereignty and comply with human, humanitarian and national law. So what I saw a lot with videos, even regarding mine, so there is not a lot of foreground for exactly what humanitarian international law is. We just know that it's about states and them giving up all their rights and equal for one good purpose. Like I brought up my last video about Ukraine, uh, it, by the laws of intern, uh, humanitarian international law, they should give up their right, give up their right, and just lay down against Russia, let Russia take over because it's for the good amount of international people. See, that is one thing I will agree with. So you got to think there has been over 20,000 troops killed with with Ukraine. If they just laid down and complied, that would take all, all be fine. Like I said, again, with them, uh, they would still be under Russia ruling. So it would be almost like a dictatorship taking over. But still, like like we said, when you comply to humanitarian international law, it's for the greater good, for the good numbers of people. So these people will basically, they're trading their freedom for their life. Which in some respects over there is what should need to be done. Then let's bring it back to the COVID crisis I was talking about last episode. So the COVID crisis, you got to think, especially in the United States, each state hand, handle it separately. Some states are still closed. Like Portland, Portland, Oregon was closed for the longest time. California was under lockdown for the longest. Texas and Florida were the first ones to open. But guess what? If it was like humanitarian law, we all would have came together as one and battled this together. Not individually, which in my head could be great. Which we would probably end the pandemic a half a year faster, maybe sooner. Our, you got to think, our vaccines rolled out greatly when it was just one team working on one goal, which the United States wasn't. Each state had its own individual goal to hit, which sometimes is... Not what we need. In that pandemic, we need to get what's best for the right of all our people. I don't care who you are. I don't care what race you are. As long as you are a United States American, we all, de all deserve the same rights. And in this pandemic, the health of our Americans should have been over any statewide order or any uh, government order, anything. That's because that's way too personal. Sovereignty, or sovereignty, sorry. So sovereignty in general is just, what what are you willing, what are you willing to give up or not give up in a situation? So when we talk about humanitarian international law, what we want to, what we want to do is make it so all is right for one good purpose. So you guys think of like states, don't think of places like North Korea, because that is a dictatorship. That is not humanitarian international law. When I think of humanitarian, humanitarian international law, I think of republics that have, it's all one government for one state and they deal with all of it. One president, but there's no dictator. Uh, like uh, a professor used to mention, like Nicaragua. We used to have, uh, or like him adding UNISAR in there, uh, Rwanda. Uh, we, wanted, we wanna look at all these cases to get a better understanding of what's out there and what shows 